Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video for you today um, talking about, again, something that's kind of been on my heart um, in regards to the whole, I guess it's more so like keeping up with the Joneses or whatever you want to call it. Um, so one of the things that obviously is kind of going around right now is, again, the whole homesteading trend, way of life, whatever you want to call it, where everybody wants a homestead or everybody thinks they should be homesteading and everything like that. And I'll be completely honest, it's a fantastic way of life. Um, it can be hard, but it's a fantastic way of life. But um, I want to talk a little bit about that because a lot of times I feel like you see people like us, in all honesty, that we are on our 40 acres, you know, we're homesteading, we're doing the things, we're raising the animals and blah, 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 blah. And what you don't see necessarily is the part that got us here. So I want to talk a little bit about that because I want to share a real, very realistic uh, approach to the way life can be with this, with this kind of life. Um, now, I will say, obviously, this is not the way it is for everybody. Um, there are some people who obviously um, have different finances or whatever that allow them to do things a lot faster or a lot um, more efficient, or I don't know how you want to put it, than like even say us. Um but I want to give you a little bit of an example. Um, basically, I want to share this to um, to help remind you to not be disappointed with humble beginnings. So, our story and how we started. Uh, Ten years ago, my husband and I, or my husband actually, decided that he wanted to start homesteading. Um, this is, we have zero background uh, in homesteading. My extent of homesteading was having cats growing up. <laughs> we had no livestock whatsoever. So obviously we weren't homesteading. We had, we had cats. We had outdoor cats. That's it. That's all my family had. And my husband had a couple pygmy goats that were basically pets um, growing up and then a whole bunch of dogs like over the course of years. And same with us. We had cats for all my entire life growing up, but it was over the course of years. And so my husband had zero homesteading background. And basically what happened is my husband decided to start researching homesteading, researching animal husbandry, um, but in the sustainable regenerative type form versus uh, contemporary agriculture. And you can hear all our, our birds going off behind us now. Um, and so this was, a gosh, 2024 will be a decade now that we've been homesteading. It was January of 2024 that we got our sheep. We actually started with sheep before we even had chickens, but chickens came shortly thereafter. And so... Here's the thing, though. When my husband and I started homesteading, we were renting a 700-square-foot house, and we were on somebody else's land. We basically shared a property with them, um, and we got our sheep, and then we, um, short, like I said, shortly thereafter, got our chickens. We were renting. Then we moved to a different house, and the deal with that new house was we were, again, renting the house, but they had 10 acres in the back um, that we could put our sheep on. The deal with that was is because we had so many sheep, we were able to get them green belted. So instead of leasing the land, we actually got them a tax exemption on their property that was larger than what they could have uh, made us pay for leasing the land. So they decided to do the tax exemption versus making us pay for leased land. So we were on that property for a while and then we moved again. And again, our sheep and chickens came with us to a different property. And finally, at a certain point, um, we were still renting. We were in our late 20s and we were, um, gosh, I was 29. My husband would have been 28. Um, and what happened to get us to the point of buying a home was God slammed the door in our face of a rental we were in, shoved us in the dirt, hardcore, uh, broke me emotionally, um, put my, our marriage through a really tough time and basically made us rely solely on him. What got us to buying our first house was getting my husband and I to our lowest point in our lives. And we were living just fine, you know, renting and, you know, we wanted to buy one day and everything like that, but we didn't think we were able to. Um, because also along with this, my husband and I have always had the philosophy of a parent will be home with the children. 
we homeschool, we don't put our kids in daycare. And so we have had to make a lot of difficult choices in the way of finances in order to make that happen. Um, we have never lived like lavishly or anything like that. Um, we have always lived within our modest means and we've done things to make sure that we can afford the way we live and, you know, to make sure we afford food, our food for our children is more important than cable. I can't even tell you, oh, gosh, it's been like almost 20 years since I've had cable. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things, um, that we chose a certain way of life and we stuck to our guns. We were not going to, um, back down from that. We weren't going to put our kids in daycare and we've done what we could to make that work. And so far, up until this point, we have been parents for a decade now. Our kids have never been in daycare and we've homeschooled. Um, again, we've made really hard choices and we haven't sacrificed our values either for that. Um, now again, our situation's different. I know times right now are different and I'll be completely honest right now, both my husband and I work full time, but I work full time from home. Again, I, I make sure that I'm home with the kids. And so there's that. Um, so we get to the point where we are mentally, emotionally, spiritually, completely broken. Um, we're down and out. We're trying to figure out, we have to find a place to live basically. And we are blessed with the ability to buy our first home. We had at the time 20 some odd sheep. We had 60 chickens and, uh, what we could afford was a quarter, a third of an acre in town, like in town town, like in a downtown area. Now it was a beautiful downtown area. Actually, it was very historic. Um, so it wasn't your typical downtown, but we could only afford a third of an acre. What happens to the chickens and the sheep? Chickens all got butchered. They became dinner, even though many of the chickens were still laying, but the chickens became dinner and the sheep got sent to my in-law's house because they lived on five acres because we couldn't manage our sheep anymore. There was no way for us to be able to keep our sheep and actually be able to afford to buy a home. And so we put our sheep where they needed to be, where they needed to go in order for us to be able to have a home. Now, of course, my husband still went over to my in-law's house every day to help with the sheep. He worked for my father-in-law at the time. And so he was there every day anyways for work, um, loading up and going down south to work. And so um, we get this house and when I say house, the only thing I liked about this house that we bought was the backyard. The backyard was absolutely beautiful. And it was like basically all we had was the backyard. There was like tiny little side yards and a tiny little front yard. But that was it. It had enough bedrooms and enough bathrooms. But it was nasty, guys. Like there were rats in it that we had to exterminate. The walls were like caked in like cigarette tar from the renters prior um, at one point, our ceiling in our living room collapsed because we didn't realize that air handler was leaking and it had had black mold in it. So what, guess what happened, guys? We renovated the house. <laughs> we bought this really junky house. Now, it had good bones still, like st structurally minus the living room roof, our ceiling. Structurally, it was still sound. It had a fairly new roof on it. It still had several years, like it had still had like 10 years left on the roof or something like that. The AC unit on the outside actually was uh, fairly new, just not the air handler. But we had to do renovations. We had to paint that, that we had to clean the walls and ceiling from top to bottom. We painted everything. We renovated the kitchen. We renovated both the bathrooms. We redid drywall. Uh, we had to put in a new air handler when the old hair, air handler broke. We obviously had to redo ceilings. <laughs> um, we had to redo the back porch because the back porch was falling apart. It, it was just, it, obviously it was a mess and obviously we had to get rid of the rats. But here's the thing, guys, we bought what we could afford and we were hella thankful for it. The fact that I, my goal for my thirties was to buy a house, to buy our first home because I'd been renting since I was 18 years old and I was now 29. So I've been renting for over a decade. My goal for my thirties was to buy a home and guess what happened? Even though it about broke us, this, well, it broke me, it straight up broke me, but it, <laughs> but it was a good thing. Um, just a few months after I turned 30 and before my husband was even 30, we bought our first home. It was not in an area we necessarily wanted to live. Again, it was a beautiful area, but it wasn't our kind of area. It was beautiful. 
like I, like I said, the area, the house. Oh, we oh we also ripped out every single window in that house and replaced it because their windows they were they're old. The windows were so old. Some of them you couldn't open. Some of them were broken. Like we had to replace every single window in the house. That was another thing we did. We painted the entire exterior of the house. Got a lot of. Um, if you know the fact that we're building a house right now, you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> that God was literally just preparing us for building a house because we had to like renovate an entire house. So we spent two and a half years in that house, renovating it, living in it, obviously renovating it and being very thankful for what we had. Granted to after two and a half years, that's when my husband and I both, we had felt the call for years at that point, but that's when we realized we were moving to Oklahoma. We sold the house for 65% more than what we bought it for. Hear that? 65% more than what we bought it for because we were able to renovate it. And we were able to buy the property we're on right now. So I want to share that because a lot of people now want to do the home study, want to have all the animals, want, you know, want this lifestyle. They, you know, I get messages, Sarah, I want what you have. Like, gosh, you guys have, you know, you're living it up. You're like you're you're living such a great life, and we are. But the thing about it is, is you don't see the back end. You don't see when my husband and I didn't have kids and we were living in a cockroach infested camper to try to make ends meet, you know, newlywed kind of deal. You don't see us living in tiny houses. You don't see us busting our butts to get where we are. You don't see us doing all the hard things that got to this point. And again, the cockroach infested camper was pre-kids. Don't worry. No kids were in danger. <laughs> My sanity was, but no kids. <laughs> but here's the thing. You can't be afraid of small beginnings. You can't want, 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 want all the stuff and not have a way to get there. Now, some people are absolutely blessed to go from being, you know, living in their parents' house to own them 40 acres and the whole nine yards because of whatever they've done or family help or whatever. And that's fantastic. But the reality of it is, is a lot of the people who have the 40 acres with the homestead and everything else either have, well, all of them probably have busted their butts to get here and probably lived in some fav fairly unsavory situations prior to this point. Um, everybody I know that has the 40 acres and a homestead kind of lifestyle worked their butts off to get to this point. They had small beginnings. They had humble beginnings. They had most of the people I know that have the, you know, again, the 40, and I'm being general. Some people have varying amounts of property, but the quote 40 acres and a homestead kind of deal, vast majority of them started out living in campers. Um, I feel like nowadays people have this attitude that there, there was keeping up with the Joneses before, you know, when I was like in my twenties where everybody wanted the 2,500 square foot house on a quarter of an acre in the fancy gated neighborhood. I'll be completely honest. I was one of those people at one point. Now everybody wants the 40 acres and a homestead and blah, 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 blah. Either way, you have to work to get there. And sometimes that point of 40 acres and a homestead isn't your starting point. Sometimes your starting point is the third of an acre and a rat infested house <laughs> and you fix it up and you sell it for a bunch of money and then you're able to afford the 40 acres in a homestead. So it's one of those things that you have to think about it too. And also you have to think about too, what does God want you to do right now? When I was in my twenties, I could not have handled 40 acres in a homestead kind of deal. Now we, again, I was in my twenties when we start, I was in my mid twenties when we started homesteading and we homesteaded on anywhere from a third of an acre to 14 acres. And so we have done larger scale homesteading. So I can't say that we haven't done it. We have. And that was the thing when we had to scale back all the way to that third of an acre, because that's all we could afford. Guess what we had? Because we couldn't have chickens in town. We had quail. And we had rabbits that we sold for money. And we had a ton of vegetables and everything else, like a whole big garden and everything else, aquaponics style, not like in the ground, because again, third of an acre. But we had like 140 some odd food bearing type plants on a third of an acre with quail. So we were still getting eggs and everything else. Oh, and microgreens. We grew microgreens too. That was actually a business. 
Um, so the thing about it is, is you can homestead no matter what size property you live on. You just have to scale it appropriately. And again, sometimes your starting point is not going to be the beautiful house on the 40 acres with the animals and everything else. Sometimes you have to work up to it. And quite frankly, I think a lot of people need to take a look at their capabilities and see if that's something they even want to do. Do you actually want to manage? Because I can tell you it's a lot of damn work. Do you actually want to manage all the animals and all the infrastructure and all the work that goes into properly managing 40 acres in a homestead? Because here's the thing, guys. Just because everybody else has it doesn't mean you should. We didn't plan to be on a property this large. My husband and I planned on buying property cash outright, smaller property, and working our way up to buying larger larger property because we knew this size was what we wanted to end up on. We just didn't necessarily think that was our next step. So when we came to Oklahoma to buy property, we actually were going to buy smaller that we could have bought cash outright because again, we sold our house for 65% more than what we bought it for. So... When we came to Oklahoma, all those properties we were thinking about buying were already under contract. This is a property that opened up. This is a property that God showed us that he wanted us to be on. And now, two and a half, almost three years later, we understand why. And we still have a lot of work to do, a ton of work to do. But we're getting there, and we're doing it, and we're putting in the work, and we're making the sacrifices, and we're living the smaller life. We're not living in some big fancy house or anything like that. Y'all, I'm super freaking stoked for 450 square feet. But here's the thing. This wasn't our first step. Technically, in all honesty, I mean, owning wise, it's our second step. But the amount of steps it took to actually get here, homesteading for a decade, a decade of knowledge before we got to the big land, a decade of trying to figure out who we are, what we do, how we do it, what does God want for us. Now, again, not everybody's going to have to be like that because, again, when we started homesteading, we didn't have God really in our lives. And so that's something I just really want you all to think about is what does God want for you to do? Not what do you think you should have because everybody else has it or everybody else wants it. And even then, does God want you on something really large is that what he's calling you to do he might be calling you to do something smaller for now or he might call you to do something bigger but you have to think about that and I don't want anybody to be afraid of small humble beginnings because they're where you learn so so much and it's where you're really tried and where you learn really honestly who you are and what you're willing to do and you set aside the ego and you set aside the keeping up with the joneses i don't care what anybody else has all i care about is what god wants us to do with this property and so i want you to just think about that be praying on it um now if 40 acres and a homestead is absolutely what you want to do go for it guys and like i've said before in all my videos if you have questions drop them in the comments below and i'll be happy to share them with you but I just wanted to um, kind of share our humble beginnings with you guys so that you can see and understand where we're coming from and know that this was not our first step. Um, and who knows, it may not be our last. So just want to share that with y'all. Like I said, if y'all have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them. But I want y'all to pray on what God wants you to do. Have a good one. Bye.